Hi everyone, my name is Andre. I will show you a short lesson about how to use G5 Studio. You can see the start page on the screen. It's very simple and typical. Let's go ahead. I will create an application, empty project. Default platform is defined for my workstation. It can be changed at any time. Ok, it's ready. I'll add a file for the source code. As you can see, two objects were created in the project tree. Actually, it's only one file and two views of this file. I'm adding the main class of the application. Its object will be created automatically when application is starting. This is an alternative of the function main. Let's define the constructor. Some code was added automatically. I am going to create a window with some text, a button and an image. But first I need a layout for the window. I am using a pointer to the constant layout. An empty layout is added and double click. It contains only a window. I am adding a button, a text and a picture. I am ready to create a window with the layout. By the way, you can use this layout for a web page too. Now I am going to find the text field and to initialize it. Do you see these text objects? You can write any symbols inside it, even quotes. Left click on the text object. You can also mark the text as translatable and specify a text encode. Now I want to initialize the picture. I'm using another way to find an object, an operator find. Right of it is a special string without quotes. And I am inserting a picture. It's a part of the source code now. You can also add audio, video and many other objects. Now I will show you the third method to find something in the window. The operator SELECT is defined in the package window. You can use the same operator for a database. It returns an array, we need the first element of it. Our button will close the program. Window is ready. Let's show it. And we have an error in the program. The pointer to the window is a local variable. It means the window will be destroyed immediately when the constructor is executed. Let's define it as a global variable. You can also edit it like a UML diagram. The program is ready. Let's run it. Yes, it works. And I have five warnings. No trap. It means I should catch exceptions from the operators and the functions. Let's set traps for the errors. The trap is created, but it doesn't contain any bait for errors. Double click on the trap and you can see all possible errors for this part of the source code. Bait is ready. I'm defining the error handlers. Hide the trap. 
and the trap for any other errors. You can throw any objects, but the class error is preferable. All traps are ready. Let's compile it again. No warnings. Good. The application is ready, but I want to do it more professional. I will create an additional object. Now I am an analyst and I will create a task for the developer. Analysts work with layouts and scenes. I'm creating the same window for the first scene. I'll define the text and image in the layout. And I want to define an adaptive design for the window. I want the text size to depend from the window size. Now I want to define some logic for the window. The first click on the button will destroy the image from the window. And the second click will close the window. It's only the scripts for the layouts, they don't affect the program but you can convert the scripts to the source code. Let's run the layout, not the program. It works. Now I am a designer. I will work with the model. And I'm not a good designer. The task for the developer is ready. And I am the developer again. I will connect the layout to the project. I don't need this code anymore. Let's run the program. It's black. And what about the adaptive design? Good. The logic of the program differs from the layouts. G5 Studio can compare it. The first click have to delete the picture, but it closed the program. The analyst will punish me. But let's go ahead. The lip story. I'll download the real design. The package is already imported. This is an actual library and it's better to specify the library version. I'm also defining a namespace for it. I'll use a layout for the button from the library. You can find documents for the library on the lib story. I have done it already. And let's run it last time. Click. Cool. That's all for today. If you like this lesson, please share the video with your friends. You can subscribe to the next lesson using this email. It will be in two weeks at July 12th, 2019.
2021. Thank you for your attention.